Hey, what time is it? It's That's time. right. It's time for the Clash of Champions review. Thank you so much for coming back and tuning in to another episode of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. We are back here today. Unfortunately, we do not have the entire crew. It will not be a triple threat today. It will just be a straight up one-on-one -on -one match. It is myself, the Shant, and as always, the man himself, the legal advisor, the advocate. He's like Triple H. He's got 10 nicknames. Ladies and gentlemen, the commish. It's hard to keep up with the nicknames at one point. Yeah. It's like you have to write them down. And if you miss one, it, it kind of throws me off. Well, not really, but it's like if, if I was being called out to the ring, I'd be like, you, you you need to do it again. But I wouldn't be like shamed to like have it held for like so long. Oh, and that's another thing I need to talk about about uh, SmackDown's announcer because sometimes the way he enunciates people's names, it's like, why do you need to add emphasis? Like, why? I think it's just his style. He's a what, good announcer. No, he is. But what if his styles tend to clash? Hey, do you get uh, it? Cause because, like, Clash with, AJ, like, the other announcers, and, and then, then, like, the, the, the paper... And the move hit me. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, this um, episode is brought to you in part by the Anything Wrestling Podcast 1 Instagram account. Uh, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, check out the link in the bio for episodes being posted. Um, of course, we're trying to catch you up with what we call our Season 1 of uh the podcast and uh it's also brought to you in part by the wwe network where you can get it for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only 9.99 9.99 it's not ten dollars it's not a thousand dollars nor it's one million dollars but 9.99 and of course if the million dollar man ted dibiase himself was listening Everything has a price for nine yeah. ninety nine. Just nine ninety nine. Yeah, but I'm sure you can afford like many subscriptions. I'm sure he gets it for free. So I wonder if they get it for free. Well, if former okay. wrestlers who are now legends, if they get it for free, I wonder. Yeah, probably discounted price. You know, I'll get up with a deal. Maybe they get it for nine ninety eight. I don't know. Hey, Vince, every, would, Vince would stiff him on at I, least like something. Every penny counts. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but moving forward um, with the episode, we have a... I think this has been a pay-per-view that kind of lived up this time. Really? To, well, okay. If you had to rate the whole thing. Out of? Like five. Maybe a three. Three out of five. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I would say like maybe three and a half. Maybe. Okay. Just, just to be... It's not like, oh my God, it, it's like a five out of five. It's WrestleMania-esque. But at least it was a lot better than what we've gotten for Clash pay-per-views. And for like in-between pay-per-views before like Survivor Series. Yeah. Or, or after SummerSlam. The minor ones. Mm-hmm. I will say this though, I like I, I caught on to it like maybe a third of the way of the show. I thought it was highly unnecessary to do like the formal announcement for each and every single title match. I'm like, why don't you just do it back in the day when as they're coming to the ring, you say the following contest is scheduled for one fall and it is for the insert here championship making his way to the ring, so and so, and then you would have the... Like, why do we have to wait till they're all in the ring and then do dim it? Dim the lights, and then it's like you said, Greg Hamilton are in the top films. They take their time saying that introduction. It's like, guys, let's... We got a show to do, like... And we had a, we essentially saw that 11 times. There were 11 title matches. We essentially saw it 11 times. So... Like, I think I would have done it only for, like... The big ones? For the Universal Championship. WWE. WWE. And the two women's. Yeah, that's it. No need for the tags. No need for the Intercontinental. Not that they're not important. Mm. Not that they're relevant. Mm. Or irrelevant. Mm. No, that's the right word. That is the right word, yeah. Sorry, I tried. 
But, again, you want to cut down on time, you want to make it a good show, there's certain things you can work on still. No wonder all their shows are four or five hours long. Jesus Christ. And then with advertising? Advertising. I was going to say, yeah, they really want you to get that Roman Reigns cap. Get it. Got it. Get it. If you didn't get it, good. If you did get it, okay. If you didn't get it, then make sure you get got. Get gotten. Gotten get? Anyways, I'm just playing with words. Yeah. Uh, so let's start. Well, I didn't. I chose to skip the pre-show just because I don't think I can stand listening to like Charlie and every other person she has around her. <laughs> Not her, but just everyone else around her. Because at one point it's like, I don't care for your opinion. I don't care for yours. Let's just move on. But. Uh, if you had to rate the Drew Gulak match, what would you say? Pretty good. Um, we've talked about this before. Cruiserweights, usually they do a good job of trying to get everybody into the pay-per-view like spirit. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a good match. Uh, yeah, no. like I, I don't have anything negative to say about that. So Drew retained. Uh, moving on. I was surprised, and maybe this is appropriate fitting that this was on the pre-show, the... Uh, United States Championship match. I was shocked. I was shocked. But then I thought back there was one pre-show where Daniel Bryan was on it. I think he was still tag team champions with Rowan. I'm like, I think I brought this up where I'm like, maybe we need someone to kind of rotate in that position. Like, hey, dude, we got to sacrifice your match tonight. Put it in the pre-show. I will say this, though, without kissing any of their asses, this was a great match. AJ Styles and Cedric, very, very good match. Very entertaining. High spots. Just the match where it's just high spot, high spot, high spot. So AJ can still carry on a good match regardless of where on the show he's at. But is it a question of who he's working with? Because we've we've talked about this before. The sh- the big title run with Shinsuke and then Samoa Joe. So, I don't know. It could either be that or it could be that maybe he felt like, okay, if I'm being put back to the back of the line, I need to stand out. Yeah. And he... And he did. He did, yeah. But moving to the actual show itself, we have newly crowned WWE Raw Tag Team Champions with Rick Robert Rude, or Robert Rick Rude, and Dolph Ziggity Zig Zigzag Zigster Ziggler going up against. The former champions in Seth, Burn It Down, Rollins. Sokka Rollins, yeah. And Braun, come get these hands, Strowman. Strowman. So, I liked the match. I thought it was okay. It, it, it felt like like, a, like an actual tag match should be. Okay. Like, just like the back and forth of heels, you know, trying to dominate. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously your stronger partner of your face team is like the one in weight. I will say this though, I was really impressed with uh, Robert. Robert was like the one that I felt like kind of carried it a little more for me. Okay. I would say, I I don't know what you thought. Not to piss on the whole thing, I don't remember a whole lot. Um. It seemed like a quick way to take care of business because these poor guys still had to wrestle another match later on that night. So, uh, not the longest match in the world for obvious reasons, but Seth taking the pinfall kind of planted a seed of, is Braun going to turn? Is he going to... Because we talked about this the other time, where Braun goes, well, we don't got the talk to tag titles anymore, so... It's I'm gonna... all about us now. Yeah, exactly. Um... Yeah, no, okay, match. I don't really remember uh, like a memorable spot or anything like that. I think it was just, you know, um, glorious DDT, uh, pinfall, new tag champs. I'm going to throw this match in just because we didn't get to see it till Raw. And because I think you want to know what my reaction is. And we are actually watching it right now. Uh, the King of the Ring finals, which again, still annoyed that this tournament is in September. Not in June. You have... Uh, should I say who the winner is? Or should we just talk about the match first? You could go ahead and announce winners. Uh, 
newly crowned King Baron Corbin versus uh, Kurt Chad, Angle's son, Chad Gable. Oh no, that was the other one. Um, I'm gonna be honest. This kind of comes down to like how when Lesnar won the Money in the Bank, and we're like, okay, look, if this is the cards that were dealt, how do we go with it? I personally like the. I don't know if you saw the SmackDown segment, like the coronation. Oh, the coronation. I liked it. I, I thought he was playing off of it, get like, and then calling Chad Gable out with the puns. But then Chad Gable, like, okay, you want to piss all over me? Like, I'll show you. Yeah. Destroying the throne and the scepter and the, the crown. Um, I think Corbin, because we talked about this for a long time, how do they take the heat that Shane McMahon has and put it on someone else and establish them as a heel? I think they're doing that. Well, someone who's already pre-established as a heel, but now just taking the heat even further. Yeah. Um, you have that with Corbin. What's your you, reaction? You keep on saying... No that. lie. I actually thought this was fitting. Okay. I thought if it's down to them, it has to be Baron Corbin. Right. Like, everyone knows my feelings towards Baron, but the thing is, this kind of fits. Okay. Because I, I kind of thought back again, like, oh, very little amount of kings that are face wrestlers, more heels. Right. Like, you have a few of them that were faces. And it's like, what does what Chad Gable gain out of this? Like, what is he going to gain? Like, oh, I'm in the spotlight. I'm no longer with, you know... Uh, Jason Jordan? Yeah, or okay. Rick Rude. Or I mean, Robert Rude. Um, but what does Corbin get? Oh, natural attention like usual. He, hatred from the fans, true heel form. And now it's like, okay, he gets this strut around that whole, you know, I'm the king now. Yeah. I'm King Corbin. You know, it, it, it kind of reminds me of like, King Becca. Who, by the way, made an appearance at Night of Champions. Or, did I just say that? Tell me, I didn't just say that. Sorry, I meant Clash of Champions. Still felt like Night of Champions, though, but... Because if it's Clash, technically shouldn't it be champion versus champion at that point? I don't, I don't, I don't make up the titles here. We don't need any more titles. But, again, I, I thought that was right. I think that's the only way, like... I guess you still give continuity to the King of the Ring yeah. tournament itself, but you establish it like, all right, you maybe you can bring him back next year, maybe during the right time of the year, maybe you push someone that we hashtag. There it is, push Cesaro. There you go. Yeah, I, I think with this match, nothing against Chad Gable. I just felt like I'm like, why are you in the finals though? Like, well, that's that's another thing that threw me off too. It's like he, he, no one saw him even getting past the first round against what Shelton Benjamin. Nobody ever saw him like on SmackDown. This guy would just have awkward backstage segments, and it's like, oh, you're in the King of the Ring now. Oh, you're in the semifinals. Oh, you're he in made the, it finals. To the finals. Okay, but it, I didn't even think he was a face. I thought he was a heel because of tagging along with you know. Remember it was. The what glorious? What was their team? I think it was just uh, Gable and Rude. And Rude yeah. yeah, but he went along with that whole moniker. He he fit, got the right? robe and everything. Yeah. yeah, but now it's just like oh, you know, it's just Chad Gable. I don't know. Maybe there's something. Maybe like I guess the guy can wrestle. He can have yeah. a match because I've seen him. Maybe Eric Bischoff's trying to push him, like, as a mid-carder. Maybe. I, I don't know. But I think that was fitting. Let's move on. Uh, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship match between A1, still women's champion, Bayley, uh, defeating the nine-time, nine not th- ten, no, we're not doing it. Uh, women's champion, or former, uh, Charlotte Flair. Okay. You got something you got to say, so go ahead. So, we all know how we feel about Blonde Cena. Everybody knows. The it, fact that we call her Blonde Cena tells you. Like, you can hear it in the name. It, it's like, alright, so we thought it would go her way, you know. 
Should we be a 10 time champion? Eh. Not happening. Bailey retained her title, but I just didn't. I, I, you, you explained it. Typical heel. I loved it. Wins the way a heel should. It just throws me off because it's like I still kind of find it hard to believe she's a heel. And I think that's where the big problem lies is that face Bailey and heel Bailey have been the same thing. Yeah, nothing stands out about her as a heel except for the way she won this match. Just that. So it's kind of, that's the hard part to believe. It's like, all right, you did what a heel would do. You know, you took off the belt buckle pad, you made sure she hit her head there so she'd be knocked out, get the three count, run away like a coward, like a heel does. But it's just like, it's hard to believe you're a heel and you actually look like a coward to me. But not in the sense where it's like, you're the villain. You're supposed to win like that. It's, it To me, it's literally like, what? Like, it threw me off. Yeah. I think it's because uh, out of ten things, they do one thing right. But the other nine, it's like... It doesn't justify, like, it doesn't... It doesn't click. Yeah. Eh. Um, Too sweet. Um... So, yeah, like, I think that's why I kind of liked it, because I'm like, oh, you finally do something where you're a heel. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be a heel. You're supposed to act like a heel. And my thing is, like, even before that, like, her promos, it's like... It was, it's still... No one wants to see me holding this, and then it's like, why do you sound sympathetic? I could be wrong, but I think that Bailey's heel turn was rushed and would not thought through. (laughs) <laughs> Much like the rest of the product now. Um, well, the product is kind of getting fixed slowly. No, it, it's a lot better than what we've seen at the beginning of the year. I'll tell you that. In one match, you'll, you'll, you'll know why. But my thing is, with, with this, it's just... Can't cut a promo as a heel. Don't have the antics of a heel before the main event of your pay-per-view. During your match, you're not really acting like a heel. Oh, you ended it like a heel. Okay. So, why couldn't you get the first three right? Just saying. Booking. Development. Writing. Are you guys listening? I know I, you no, are. No, they are. They, they, we're gonna, I'm going to bring it full circle. They are. So, moving on with another SmackDown championship. This is for the tag team belts. The... Newly crowned, now that they won both... The, oh, here's my thing. Have they won the NXT tag belts? Who are we talking about? The Revival? Yes. So, that's what? Triple, triple Crown. Uh, for tag Team Division, yeah, for Triple Crown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Revivals, Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder defeat the former WWE tag champions of the New Day's Big E and Xavier Woods. I was surprised by the submission end. It was kind of weird, though, because they do the shatter machine, and even the commentators call out, they're like, um, go for the pin, and there's this moment where they're kind of like, just like, just moving very awkwardly, like, what are we going to do? Oh, apply the submission hold. There was like this weird transition of from shatter machine to the <laughs> submission hold, where there was like this long, awkward pause. Um, it's kind of like they almost forgot what the ending yeah. was supposed to be. Like, what am I... Oh, submission. Okay. <clears throat> you know, and then puts them in there. Um, yeah. Um, I, I In the preview, I said uh, match of the night. No. It lost its luster. I think the reason why is because of the ending. But I think what they're trying to do is they're trying... Like, we, we know their heels. But yeah. what we don't see is the edge. Like that. If they're aligning themselves with Randy Orton, it's like, okay, you need to, like, if you hit the, sh- uh, the shatter machine, you should have gone for that submission quick just to be torturous, to be venomous like Randy would yeah. be. But you stalled, you hesitated, it's like, what? Okay. That's just, just can we end it? Yeah. Are we good? That's what it felt like. Yeah, it was a very awkward ending. 
Uh, but moving on to another tag championship match, the women's tag belts. Uh, you have you're still women's tag champions in Alexa Bliss, Lexi, aka Harley Quinn, which she looked pretty cute. Yes. And her tag partner of Nikki Cross. You wanna play? Versus the team of Fire and Desire, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Yes. I thought this was kind of almost match of the night S. Really? Kind wow. of. Almost. I, I don't want to say it was because of the whole 24-7 interruption. I, I, I almost marked out when uh, Alexa Bliss picked. If she got the three count, I would have been happy. <laughs> I would have been Because that, and it's like, okay... But here's the problem. How would you finish it? Because now she has a belt while defending a belt. And she has everybody, like, targeting Gunning her. For her. Yeah. That's probably why they didn't pull the trigger. Because they would have been like, well, if we, book, if we book it that way, how do we book out from there? I think this is how it could have booked out. I think she should have won. They give her the belt. And now she, the whole ring surrounds her. And she's like, uh, I got to leave now. And you and because technically Nikki ended the match, right? Yeah, you could have had Nikki still end the match, have Bliss come back out with the belt by herself without having to worry, and they still could have been tag champs. Yeah, you could have had her be a double champion at that point. Obviously, right. at one point, someone's gonna pin her. Yeah. But I think I would have loved that. I think if she had won it, I would have been like, holy shit, this was the best way to like continue this shenanigans yes. of a belt. But it almost had Match of the Night-esque like, vibes for me. Just because I like that they're pushing Mandy and Sonya. Obviously, I'm never going to get them split off to see Sonya prevail yes. even further. You can give Mandy a solo run as well. I, I Dan brought this up one time and it just it clicked with me. If if we feel like heavy machinery ever needs to like turn their gimmick, um, Dan brought up one time that maybe Mandy Rose could be someone of like a manager, kind of like a Trish Stratus to the TNA. I would like to see that. Where it's like Mandy gets some on air time, heavy machinery kind of gets a little bit of a you know of a shift in direction. Um, and she can kind of work. Not that she's horrible, but she we've seen before. She kind of. Well, I mean, she works that angle that it's kind of like Trish Stratus esque at the beginning of Trish's career. Like, yeah. She she's. I hate to say it like this. She's an object of like distraction, looking sexy in the, the corner. whole the whole yeah. desire thing. Yeah. But it would fit, especially with a team like Heaven Machinery. Hell. Put him with Rowan and Harper. <laughs> or put him with the AOP. Revival. AOP. They're coming any, back. any tag team that needs a, like that type of heel manager, it would work. But I like that Bliss and Cross are still champions. And, and I like how Heyman is putting the effect on those belts because it's like, all right, you want to push this women's division, like I said last week, you got to keep these belts relevant. I was going to take a survey and ask you, but you pretty much answered. Oh. Hey. Um, I was going to ask you, do you feel like since Bliss and Nikki got the tag team belts that they've been relevant? Yes. And I'm not, again, I'm not just saying this just because my girl's in there, but I truly feel like these tag titles, not going to say every single time they're in there, they have five star matches, but they're on like the, those titles we actually see it on the shows we see it on the pay-per-views there's legitimate matches it's not just bliss and uh, nikki versus local competitors there's actual tag teams facing off um so i think that uh, like you have a build you have a reason to put these on tv you, yeah you didn't have that when the iconics had it but yet everybody wanted them to have it yeah hell when you had sasha and bailey have awesome. it, okay. it, it, yeah. it it's like Okay, but they still want to be singles competitors in a way. Right. At least with these two, yeah. It's an odd pairing. Kind of like Fire and Desire, just in, with a weird twist. But I like this team. Yes. There's something about Alexa and Nikki that it, it just works. 
I think that eventually we're going to build to the angle that I mentioned probably two months earlier where I was like, there's that big betrayal and then Nikki goes back to that really dark side of like, you woke something inside of me that I, you know, had. I didn't think I had. Exactly. And there's still that thing about like, Alexa, no, not Alexa, about Nikki, what she really is, is she something about someone else? Sister Abigail. Which we'll get to later. But, again, good match. Yes. Almost had night of, match of the night type vibes. Yes. Uh, moving forward, wow, I can't believe I'm not excited for this one. The Intercontinental Championship, you have Shinsuke. Nakamura with the mouthpiece. <sighs> ah, get it? Because he's got a mouthpiece, but then Sami Zayn. Is... Sami Zayn. Uh, going up against The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, First two minutes were so entertaining with Sami Zayn like, just commentating. It, it reminded me of what's his name? I mean, I like it. But it, it's starting to remind me of the annoying little duck. Yeah. I hadn't done that in a long time. But here's the thing, though. Like, it, it kind of works for Sami Zayn. And then they cut off his mic. Here's the thing I, I want to see. I don't want them to cut off the mic. What I want them to see is eventually the ref goes outside like with with the mic still like that, like close by, that you can hear the ref say, "If you don't shut up, uh, you're, I'm I'm kicking you out of the ring. Like you're you're banned from ringside. Are you gonna shut the hell up or not?" And you just have Sammy and the ref go at it for a little bit. That would be funny. I don't know what they're doing with Sammy Zane in this regard, but it just confuses me. I don't like it. Like he's not meant to be. A, if he's a tag partner. Where he's wrestling with Shinsuke, I get it. Manager, though? Heel? No, none of it works. Like, I kind of would like it if he went on this, like, weird path of, like... Um... Oh, I just noticed the wall. Commission. Sorry. Hey, it, you do it, too. He was watching the Firefly Funhouse, which is probably the most entertaining segment on the show, so... But yeah, it just does, it just feels weird because it's like if he went the route Kevin Owens went, where it's like, all right, you're a heel, but now you're the anti-hero, it would make sense. Like if you had him and Kevin tag up again, but in this route of being against an authority figure or just being against the establishment, it, I think I would like that out of Sami Zayn. Not this whole. Oh, what a maneuver there. Oh, he, that was okay by the Miz. That was all right. I think that was an arm drag. <laughs> I laughed my ass off when I heard that. Which, by the way, what is move 233? Well, it would be the arm drag takedown, but followed by 234. What move is that? The arm of bar. Did you say arm of bar? Yes. Oh. But it's still an arm bar. Of the bar. From of an, an arm. arm bar. Bar. An arm. Of an arm. Which was put in an arm bar. Wow, this is a long name. Anyways, moving forward. Um, but yeah, I, that's, that's a story. But that could be an episode on its own. But I just, I personally feel like since two years ago, they screwed Sami Zayn in direction where it almost feels like, are you trying to mankind him where you kill the character? Like, what are you trying to do? Or are you trying to develop him into something else that kind of works, but eventually but you you're going to kill that character too? Yeah. Uh, the match. Typical shenanigans, typical heel esque. Mm. Would you have wanted Miz to be champion? No. Shinsuke finally has a title. He's finally on TV. Do not take him off. Whatever okay. you do. So let's move forward with the Raw Women's Championship. Sasha Banks. The boss. Versus Becky the man Lynch. The Baxter. 
for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. Here's a, okay. Before you you ask anything, I, I just want to ask this: Do are you taking a survey? Yes, I think I'm taking a survey. Hey yo, two questions in this: How good of, of health insurance do referees have? <laughs> That's the longest bump I've ever seen a ref take. Triple in a H while. versus Undertaker WrestleMania 17. Just as long, but still, it, it's a long bump for a referee. Yeah, because in did, this modern day, they, they they did go out and then work themselves way. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how good is the insurance for a referee? Ask um, what's his name? Uh, the name of the host um. Last last week tonight, what, what's what's the name? What's his name? Dude? Oh, I know what you're talking. About. I forgot the name. Though. Steve Stephen Col- Colbert. Steve Colbert. Yeah, yeah. Ask him. He'll tell you. Oh Jesus! All right, and then um, your second thing you were gonna ask. No, nah, that's mostly it. I think I had. I think you had something. I'm gonna take a survey here. There you go. That's three. Um, match of the night. Yeah. Okay. That's the match okay. of the night. This, okay. Because it's like, all right, we finally get what we wanted to see out of the two of them. We've seen them compete against each other. It's like... So you're giving credit here. I just, I want to make sure. Uh, unfortunately, yes. But the fact that it went the way it went still makes me happy. But did I call it or did I call it? You called it on both the matches, but I think you predicted it mostly at this one. Yes. I think that's what was needed. Yes. I think that's what we needed to see with these two, especially moving forward to next month. Um, again, like, how does a ref take a bump that long? <laughs> especially the way these ha- these referees look. You know what's funny? I just thought about it. These, these referees have an earpiece. So I can imagine as they're lying there, like, what's going through their ear, what they're hearing, probably Vince... Keep on selling, damn it. Um, or at least at one point, like, if Triple H is involved, like, look, just lay there. Just lay there. Take a nap. Take a nap. Like, if I have to yell, then just wake up. They're coming back to the ring. Get up. Get up. Huh? Huh? Sell it more. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, no doubt, match of the night. Both competitors bringing out everything. There needed to be a way for you to keep Becky's momentum at, and at the same time not destroying Sasha's return. Because if she came back with all the chair shots, the attacks, and the promos, and she just lost again, it's like... You okay, wasted her time. They Lacey Evans it, essentially. Um, mm, that's something I kind of want to talk about, too. Okay. But no, no, but let's finish with this first. Because um, there's something about Lacey right now. I'm just like, what are we doing? Um, but no, yeah. Uh, I And also, I talked about it before. Don't handle everything inside of the ring. You need to have stuff that happens outside of the ring. and Like, build it. I, make it work. I turned to Kevin, which is our... Um, which is essentially the, the fourth guy. Uh, Who's the fourth man? It's Kevin. Um, but who is the fourth man? It's... Um, I the second one they were by like the concession stands. I turned to Kevin. I'm like, oh, they're going old school, and he adamantly agreed. I went, yep, because finally we weren't seeing just stuff around ringside like these. They actually took it like they like fought they their went way through the audience. They yep. went through the crowd. They went to the back of the concession stands. They eventually started coming back. They Mustard. involved like weaponry, chairs, mustard. mustard. I, I, at one point, I'm like, why do I feel like I've seen this before? I could have sworn I have. But, like, it felt right. Yes. It felt good. The fact that, and by the way, this is the second longest match for 20 minutes. Okay. It was necessary. Yes. And now that, like, the rematch, there's no rematch clause anymore, but she asked for one. The fact that, like, it's like, all right, you want your rematch, you'll get it. But you get it under my terms. Yes. The whole, I'm challenging you again, but you have to face me in hell. Yep. In the cage, in the hell cell. I like that. 
I like that it's we're getting the whole let's take it a step further yeah. let, let, let's make this more intense let's sell this and I think I said if you want this rivalry rivalry to keep going you need to take it to hell in a cell yeah. and maybe something is gonna happen where someone breaks into a cage even though we have to see that weird multiple crossed animal come back breathe say I'm Shant and I'm calm I'm Shant and I'm calm say it one more time I am Shant Okay, just let her know. I'm okay. But it has to happen if we want to see what we want to see. Well, they took one of our other ideas, so I don't know. And what's the other idea? What's the next match? Uh, Kofi Kingston. Oh. Yeah, we haven't gotten to that match yet. I'll bring it up when we get to it. But moving on. Again, we're glad that Becky and Sasha ended the way it did, and yes. it's continuing. But yep. moving on. Uh... Kofi Kingston, your current and still reigning WWE heavyweight champion, defeating a one deserving, eventually he'll get a title run one last time, Randall Keith Orton. Stupid. 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 That's the longest match, apparently, by 50 seconds. It felt like a long match. Uh, it felt dragged. You... Uh... Sorry, Randy, nothing against you, but Randy knows how to give you a quick 10-minute match. And make it like, damn, this was worth watching. Circa WrestleMania 31 against Seth Rollins. Or he can give you a played-out 20, 25-minute match where you go through all the spots, all the signatures, all the finishers. Um, I like the fact that he almost felt like, okay, you're not staying down. I got to go back to the punt kick. Um... Like, he was going back to traditional Apex Predator. Yeah. Not this tamed down version. Yeah. But even when Kofi won, it wasn't exciting. It was like, all right, you, you won. I I would have preferred to have, like, this match be a no DQ to kind of get that uh, raging animalistic side of Kofi. Like, bring it out even further. Yeah. But... Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, so here's the thing. You you saw SmackDown, right? Yes. So what is the new interest with... And I'm surprised I was actually happy to see him back with the former reigning, defending, undisputed Universal Champion, Brock God. How does he do it? Let's Paul Heyman do it. Bless you, Heyman. Um, it was nice to see Brock Lesnar on SmackDown last night attacking Kofi. Not, not Seth. Kofi. Yeah. That, it, it seems like his attention is now on this belt. They, this this had been going around for roughly about the last six months that Brock Lesnar was scheduled to make an appearance for the big Fox premiere um, of SmackDown. Deal. Yeah. And that supposedly is going to be on SmackDown. Which I think is a breath of fresh air, if we're being honest. Um, I kind of thought about it. I'm like, Kofi's title run needs a little bit more... It needs an edge. Yeah. It needs, like, all right, you, you've you dealt with... That's sad. Yeah. I can't even remember who he's faced ever since he won the belt. Uh, there was Daniel. There was KO. There was Samoa Joe. There was Sami Zayn. There but was... it's not like... It, it it wasn't it, there was really no story behind yeah. it. I think the only one that really had a story was Randy. Yeah, and going then, back to the stupid and the you're the not ten ready. Ten years yeah. worth. Which again, I thought needed to culminate in a, in a extreme rules or, or like a hardcore match. Or in a hell in a cell. Again, which should have ended it properly, but I guess we don't get it. But maybe we'll get it. Maybe with we'll Rob. get it. Maybe, maybe, or maybe. If this works, would you want to see Kofi have two people give him an issue? At and not just with, with Brock, but like Randy is like, no, I'm not done with you just yet. But yet Randy can also kind of finish something with Brock. Because yeah. there's still something there between them that yeah. it's like, 
never ended the way people right. really wanted. Yeah. Um, I'd be down for it. Uh, but it would have to be believable. More with Eric Bischoff. The Bischoff touch. With, with the Bischoff touch, but also the fact that you have Paul as his... You still have Paul as a manager yeah. to Brock. So it's like, okay... He's not putting in the touch of, like, you know, you're on Raw, and this is how you're going to be sold. No, it's Eric telling them both, like, hey, I'm going to book you this way. You guys need to sell it. And Paul Heyman will listen. I will say this. Uh, Brock had a great match at SummerSlam, so maybe Who's we'll get the same with Kofi. Hopefully. Um, but, yeah, I like that. We have Brock and and maybe the title picture, but I don't like how the Randy thing ended, if it ended. But moving on to something that I've been wanting to talk about. This is the second thing I've been wanting to talk about a lot. Uh, The Eric Rowan versus Roman Reigns match, which ends in a no DQ. I have three words for that. I want my royalties. What royalties? For my idea. Oh, okay. No, that's true. But you have three I have three words for this. Controversy equals cash. How happy were you to see Luke Harper come back? I was kind of in a mixed emotions because I had that whole thing where I'm like, wait a second, this guy wanted to walk out. He wasn't happy. Maybe Bischoff or someone pulled him aside and said, hey, look, things we, were rough. I know what you want. What do you say we get you back out there? Um, and the only person that can probably convince him, and I'm pretty sure, like, look, let me talk to the old man. Let me actually give you this incentive bonus here. I'll take care of you. You want things your way? Let me work with you. Yeah. I think that's what it probably took. What are the other two things? No, no. The the last thing I want to talk about is... is oh, the okay. Next um... I will say this, though. Uh, I think, especially what we saw after SmackDown, uh, which was great because they, they, they literally tore the house down, but I stand by my prediction, Daniel Bryan is going to be the mastermind behind the whole thing. As much as we're seeing like Daniel Bryan as like, okay, I got betrayed, you know, I am I wasn't ever in control of Eric. I want to know what's going on. No, I, he's playing this very well so far. And I think they're going to go with your idea as well. Maybe at Hell in a Cell, Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan versus Luke Harper and, and Eric Rowan. Rowan. Okay, here we go. They're about to win the match. Okay, bam, running me on Roman Reigns. And you kind of have a, again, going back to Atatura, it was me, Roman. It was me all along. Um, and that would work. Yeah. It, because, all right. I think we could start connecting this with the next match. Maybe. But I I thought it was amazing. Like, okay, the, they're having their match, Rowan and Roman. Yeah, Roman's going to come out on top. I was like, what? Oh, my God. They did it. They brought him back. I think that's what, what needed to happen. And again... I think the Bischoff touch is working on yes. SmackDown because we're getting actual good endings to SmackDown. It, it doesn't leave you... Well, one episode kind of left you like, this is how we're going to do it. But every SmackDown that I've seen ever since Eric finally took over, it's like, all right, it makes sense. It's working. You're You're building stories again. Yeah. I get... Where Fox is trying to put the pressure on WWE where they kind of want to see Raw uh, competitors on SmackDown as well. Just because they want the star power. And and I guess Fox is trying to turn into like this like news slash sports channel. Yeah. Because they sold off most of their entertainment stuff to Disney. But in regards to SmackDown, it's like, alright, yeah, you have star power with Randy Orton, with Brock Lesnar, with Kofi Kingston, with Bailey, with Charlotte, but we still need more. But if Eric Bischoff is there running things, it's like, do you really, do you really need, need Raw? It? Yeah. Because if Heyman has Raw, and it's starting to finally become watchable, mm. and it's been hard to say that for a while, yeah. 
why does SmackDown really need Raw's help? I'm a fan of having each show be its own thing. Kind of like back in 02. Back in 02, yeah. Because at least when we got that, yeah, we had the separate pay-per-views. One month it was Raw, next it was SmackDown, and it went like that until... Interpromotional big... pay per view Yeah. But it worked because stories were great. Stories were good. Rivalries were good. Good matches. And you developed talent that needed it. Yeah. And you actually pushed people that deserved it. I don't I, I don't know how you feel. Um, the, the match was eh until we got to Luke Harper coming out. Um, but uh, I'm... I'm excited to see where this goes. I like I, w- I I would like to think that I'm right where Daniel Bryan is the mastermind. They can pull a swerve like they usually do, but um yeah, I I think that Bryan getting control of those two would be pretty cool to see. Definitely. Cuz they they did it a few years back, but the timing wasn't right. No, I think now the timing is starting to slowly culminate. Yeah. Right place, right time, right person. Yep. Which leads us to our final match of the event for the Universal Championship. You're still reigning current. I hate that Michael Cole called him this. Not only is he the Beast Slayer, now he's the Monster Slayer. Sako Rollinsian. Seth freaking Rollins. Burning it down. Versus... Braun, come get these hands, Strowman. I gotta say, for this match, Braun Strowman, like, just went balls out. Ragdolled him, yeah. But, like, seeing the splash on the top row, kicking out at one for the curb stomp. Then kicking out again. It's like, he wasn't gonna go down without putting on a show. Yeah. And I love that about Braun. For a second, I thought he had it won. Because, oh, me too. Because he was he was squashing Seth like there were like it was nobody's business. I thought it was pretty cool to pull out the pedigree. It, it had been a long while since we've seen that. Um, but Seth said in his promo on Raw where he's like, you know, he kicked out, so I had to dig into my bag of tricks. And he is the architect. You know, there's a reason why they call him that. So um, I think he put. Him, Braun down in convincing fashion. It wasn't just a, a phony roll up. It wasn't just anything like that. It was like, okay, I have to prove I'm worth having this belt. Yeah, I have a challenge in front of me. He had to literally put him down. So, um, yeah, no, I liked it. Uh, again, we are still uh, Braun is, has still not had a championship yet, but I think that we are we're getting there. We're getting there. So here's the thing. There's something where Seth threw out in his promo on Raw two nights ago where he's like, you know, I'm not going to have a rematch with Braun. But it's like, I don't think you're done with him. You're not done with him by a long shot, Seth. And and he's going to come back for it. But I like where it went after he won, though, at... uh, Clash of Champions. Which you sort of semi-called. I said if if it's going to happen with these two, it needs to happen in this fashion. Mm-hmm. It needs to be where the Fiend comes out because Bray threw out the challenge like before Clash. That, oh, I want to challenge either Seth or Braun for the belt at Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Lights went out. He's right there. He hits him with the sister Abigail. And then the mandible claw, and then just disappears. It was sold really well. Yeah. And then the following night, the whole mind games of like, oh, we're not done by a long shot. I Seth. think the whole show was revolved around the fiend. If you really look at it, like mm-hmm. everything, we had I think two or three Fireflies Funhouse segments. The fiend came out. Um, yeah, like the whole show was just revolved around. You know, that character. And they kind of, like, gave justice. Like, we were supposed to see him attack Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Undertaker. Ideas got scrapped. We convinced Kane to come back. Which was cool to see. But the fact that we saw The Fiend attack Kane, it's like, oh, 
there's no limit to who yeah. he's not afraid of. If he can take down the demon, Kane, then it's like, yeah, Seth has his work cut out for him. Yeah. And then, of course, the whole taunting and scaring of Seth and then still getting to him. Yeah. I'm wondering whose idea it is at that point. Like, does Bray tell him, hey, me and Seth are going to work on this. You need to let us just do what we have to do. Or when it comes down to, like, the wrestling end of it, how does that work? So far, everybody seems to conclude that this is all a Bray Wyatt deal. That everything that happens is just coming out of this guy's crane. Because even Braun said it. Yeah. Because what? Like, Bray stopped talking to Braun and they're like best friends. <laughs> and even Braun's like, oh, I had no idea he was going to do any of this. Yeah. I was just a shock like everyone else has. I would say this. he, he, has, hev- he has heavy input on creative when it comes to his segments. Uh, which it's a no-brainer like looking at the success that it's had so far. I would be like, yeah, okay, cool Whatever the man says do it go you Like know? He, yeah, And like the whole I'm sure Vince has been 100% in support of it like Even though some people are like oh, but you know Bray's making fun of him with the puppet. It's like Have you not seen like 90% of what Vince McMahon has taken in his whole career like the dude danced on a stage like an idiot his son mocked him his son-in-law mocked him of that years later stop that the man had poop Uh spilled on him the man almost died a couple times (laughs) and we all know how that worked out um Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just sit with that for a second alright we're good um but you asked me at the beginning, what would you rate it? Um, I thought that the four title matches was essentially like what... the main four. The what main four. Said. Yeah. Um, is what pulled this whole thing together. Um, all the other matches were just... They were just there, if I'm being honest. Um, the one that added, like, extra was the Rowan match, though. If you think about it, the way it ends, the 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 person we got back out of it, like if you rebuild the Wyatt family with you know Luke, Eric, Daniel, do you bring Braun into it? Is is the fiend in charge of everybody at that point? I was gonna say I would love a stare down between the three of them, and then on the other side you have the fiend. And it's like, how full circle does that come? Where here we are years later, but this time, Harper and Rowan, they're not with Bray Wyatt. They're with Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so what are you going to do? And The Fiend just does what The Fiend does. You know, just divide and conquer. All of them. So. And um, it still sells that whole thing of like, all right, The Fiend is, is an almighty power that isn't. Being capable of stock. I, I would even insist on doing the, the fun house segments that we've been su- suggesting. Where they uh, like he's like, come on over to the Firefly fun house. Yeah. And like then, as Bray. Yeah. Like, and then one by one, they disappear to where it just comes down to him and Daniel. And it's like, let me in. You know, and then. Because we've gotten this whole thing of like, yeah, it's the fiend that's, that is let in. But that's not who he ever implies to let in there's still this whole thing with Bray where he's just like I think this is something I kind of would want to discuss on a future episode as well just the whole thing of like Bray Wyatt's mentality when it comes to like this whole thing but like I feel there's a lot more that we still don't know Because with Bray Wyatt it's like he's 10 steps ahead of everybody and he has so many hidden subtexts and even within the subtext, there's more hidden yeah, stuff because yeah. there there's still the whole implication of who's Sister Abigail, the, the puppy, who's uh, Mr. Rabbit's character. Um, um, I, I forget the name. Like each puppet yeah. is a different person as well, except the only one that would make sense that it, it's still Bray in a way is uh, the pig puppet. Yeah. That's 
Husky Harris. Husky Harris. And then it's like, all right, we know who that is. That that's probably like an old incarnation of you that you've trapped in there forever. But yeah. no one thinks Sister Abigail really is a part of your mind. They yeah. think it's a separate entity. Yeah. Same thing with the the rabbit. Same thing with the fucking weird bird. bird. But. I like where he's gone with this. And it's amazing to think that this all came out of one guy's brain. And it wasn't Vince. But the thing... And, and then there's always been this discussion, like, is he... Outside like outside of WWE, like, is he okay up here? I think he is. It's just... He's probably... He's been a fan... Who... who what? Who's his dad? I, uh, IRS. Yeah, IRS, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm sure him growing up, he's seen like, you know, okay, like all these wrestlers have gimmicks. They have things that work for them. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he was always a fan of the Undertakers with the whole mind games that he used to play with Paul Bear and yeah. all that. So it's like, all right, if I ever go into the business, I really need to stand out. Yeah. And this is the only way to do it. And I'm sure he's... Obviously, he's multiplied into like the greatest thing that we've had in regards to like the WWE having yeah. for like evil dark, dark side, sorry, yeah. type esque uh, character. I'm, I'm still surprised by this, by the way. We're watching the segment between our truth and Kane, um, or. Glenn Governor Jacobs. Governor Jacobs. Um, but no, yeah. Um, Night of Champions. I'm square. I Clash thought. Of champion. Clash of Champions. Clash of Champions. I feel the same way. <laughs> um, solid three stars. Uh, again, title matches is what kept it together, but they were really good matches. Each one kind of telling its own story and allowing for it to branch out. Um, any final sentiments? Let's just hope with whatever storyline that we have written, they carry over very well to Hell in the South, for yeah. sure. Which some of them already are, um, but it just all depends on how they book out from here. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. We just reviewed Clash of Champions 2019. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you all.